I am going to tell you all about your camera. And this is not any kind of professionally made video. I am just your instructor, instructor Desiree Shanding. And I'm gonna show you my gear and show you the camera, how to turn it on, some of the features, all of the buttons and symbols and what they mean some of the extra stuff that your camera may have come with so that you can get familiar with your own camera. So your camera will most definitely look different than mine, okay? I have a Canon. I have a very old camera. It's at least 10 to 11 years old. It's a Canon 5D Mark II. So that's my camera. And if you're not sure what your camera is, you basically just look on the front of it, look for the brand name, usually has the, some numbers or letters over here, and maybe down at the bottom as well. Maybe you'll have some on the side on this side. Uh, maybe you have a Nikon or a Sony. There's all kinds of different cameras. So check out which camera you have, get familiar with it, and let's figure out where some of the buttons are. If you have a Canon, it's very likely that your buttons are in similar places to mine. Mine is a full frame camera. Full frame is a little larger and bulkier and heavier than a cropped sensor camera. And we'll learn about full frame versus cropped sensor cameras a little bit later. Let's see, I've got a lens. The lens on a DSLR, digital single lens reflex camera, the lens comes off. That's why I have a lens here on my camera and another lens here. Your lens uh, that you bought your camera with, it probably came in a kit. Yours might be a 50 millimeter lens. That means this is only 50 millimeter. It does not zoom in or zoom out. And you want to learn how to take your lens off and on and keep it very clean and don't touch any of the connections that you see there. To put my lens on my camera, I just line up that little red dots and then I turn this way. But I believe on a Nikon, you have a white dot and you turn it the opposite direction. To take it off, you push this button right here, twist and take it off. And when your lens is off of your camera, be sure to always put the cap on it. This keeps those connections nice and secure. And whenever you are resting your lenses down, I have mine on the side, but generally I would rest it like this. I would never rest it on the bottom. It's skinnier and smaller on the bottom. Also, I might have a lens cap, right? So you would put your lens cap on and then rest it like this. So those are just some tips. This lens is a 24 to 105 millimeter. It's a zoom lens. That's what those numbers mean. They zoom in, zoom out. And this one right here is also a zoom lens, but it has a longer focal length. And we'll talk all about that in a lot of detail this semester. I'm just giving you an overview. So this one is 75 to 300 millimeters. So this can zoom in very far. It's very telephoto. It's like looking through binoculars at something far away. I also have my battery charger, just plugs right in. The battery on my camera is right here and I pop it out here, put it in the charger and plug it into the wall. My memory card that this camera uses is different than yours. Most modern <laughs> cameras use SD cards. Mine uses a CF card. So this is the memory card. It's the compact flash, a CF. Yours is most likely an SD card, which is much smaller, a little uh, slimmer, and it has copper contacts on the opposite side. And now I'm pretty much ready to look at all of the other features on my camera. Well, let's go ahead and turn the camera on. Your on switch could be at the top, could be on the side. Mine is right down here. So when I turn it on, the first on and then the second on, and the second on is what I'm going to use because that allows me to use this dial back here in order to change my f-stop. And I know you don't know what an f-stop is right now, but we'll certainly learn about that soon. Now, mine does have an LCD panel. Yours, you know, could come out, it could swivel, it can do all kinds of cool things. But hopefully, you at least see information like this. If you don't, you probably need to press this button like info, right? Because if I press info, it turns off. If I press info, I get this information, and I press it again, I get all of this information. So you want to press info or option or some button on the back so that you can have access to all of this information. Let's look now at the top and this is called a hot shoe. This is where you would put a, an external flash if you had one. We're not using flash in this class at all. So I'm gonna say that again, we are not using flash at all in this class. None of your assignments 
you should not allow your pop-up flash or put a flash on here, we're not using it. We are going to be shooting on manual mode. Okay, so I'm looking at the letters on this dial and, I'm, and I know they might go in and out of focus, but you can see them pretty well. I'm looking for the letter M, okay? And I wanna line that up with the line, okay? So that I know that I am on manual mode. Manual mode is the one that most professional photographers use. AV stands for aperture value and TV stands for time value. We will learn eventually how to use these, but they're partial auto part manual, okay? So they're kind of like cheating. And also, I think that once you understand manual mode, you always get the results you want. When you are on AV or TV or fully auto, which is this green one, you don't get the results you want. So it's all about pre-visualizing the image you want to create and then using manual mode to set up the other three options or all of the other options on your camera to get the exact image you're looking for. Another one we might play around with is B for bulb. That's what that one is, B for bulb. But right now we are on M. You might have other ones, okay? But all I care about, honestly, is manual, AV, you might also just be a V, and T, V, or it might be an S, okay, depending on the camera you have. We're gonna put on manual mode, and this is our exposure button, so I'm gonna push down halfway, and notice that this little part right here activates. You can also already hear my lens focusing and moving in and out, it's trying to focus. I have it on auto focus, so look at your lens. Check your lens out right now and see where your AF for autofocus or MF for manual focus is. You probably have a switch either on the top, it could be on the bottom. If you have a Nikon and look on the bottom down here and make sure it is not on manual, but it is on auto. That's not the same thing as this button, but you have another switch if you have a Nikon where you have to put it on autofocus. And then you also have to do it on your lens. And on an icon, there's one other place within your settings, within your menu settings that you have to switch uh, to get it to fully be on autofocus. We're using autofocus in this class. Isn't that great? So always keep it on autofocus. There might be some instances where manual focus works better, but for most things, autofocus will work. I'm turned on and to activate this goes to sleep after a minute or two, and so does this. But of course, those things like that can be changed within your menu options. I have it to go to sleep after two minutes, I think. I've got this symbol right here. This is where I am going to do something which is change my metering mode. And we'll learn about metering modes with this dial. I can change my metering mode. I can also do it on the back. So I have a couple different ways that I can change my metering mode my focus, but the way to do it on the back, because most of y'all will have that option on the back, you do it by pressing a button right up here. Usually you have, you know, info to get this up and then another button to sort of activate it and then you kind of move around. Sometimes it's just your dial that's on the back. Yours might be a button with some arrows. So you're gonna have to figure that out. The best way to figure it out is to look at a video online Okay, I know it sounds kind of silly to see like this is your photography class, but I'm telling you to look it up online. But that's the truth because there are so many different styles of cameras. And so you need to find the videos that uh, correspond with your specific camera because there are videos probably made by the manufacturer, you know, the brand name for your camera um, to go over these things with you. Okay, so if this video, my video doesn't help, please look it up online. Uh, first do a Google search for it and then through Google, you'll have a better option than like going straight to YouTube and using the search bar there. So do a search on Google, search for your brand, your style, look for videos for how to use your camera, okay? If this one isn't helping. So yeah, I clicked here and then I can use this to move around. These, all of these are different settings that I can change on my camera that you're gonna learn how to use. And right now I was just talking about the metering mode, which is this one. The metering mode tells your camera how to read light. We all wanna keep our metering mode on evaluative or matrix. And it generally is a symbol that looks like that, whether you yours is called evaluative or matrix. So up here, that's how I can also change my metering mode. And honestly, this is a quicker way for me to do it. So I always use the dial up here to do that. Another thing is white balance. The WB is white balance. So I'm gonna use this dial 
And for now, we should all just keep it on AWB, which is auto white balance. And to get that to go away, I just hit the exposure button halfway down again. The AF drive has to do with how your camera focuses. So right now, I'm gonna leave mine on one shot. And I want you to notice that on the back here, AF drive would be, oh, there it says one shot. So one shot AF, okay, and that's what I'm gonna use. I might use at AI servo if I am doing action photography and I want to stop the action I would use AI servo so that's gonna track the action for me and make sure that my action images are sharp which is a pretty cool feature but for most of my pictures I won't be shooting a lot of action so I'm gonna keep it on one shot okay so that was AF drive that's this one one shot now down at the bottom I have an option two of using the timer mode, but most of the time we'll just be one picture at a time. That's that symbol. And then the next symbol is this one. It's real tiny here, but there it is. That's continuous shooting. So you can do three pictures a second or nine pictures in a series of five seconds or something like that. So you might want to try that out. That's great for action pictures as well. We have the timer mode, which is that's a 10 second countdown and that's a two second countdown. So that's how you take self portraits. All right, this is just a light to light up your chart here. And this is ISO. ISO is how sensitive your camera is to light. We're gonna learn about ISO. There'll be a whole video about that and a PowerPoint, etc. So that's how I change it quickly. So I'm gonna hit the ISO button. All right, I'm gonna use this dial at the top and I can change my ISO. The lower your ISO, the less sensitive it is to light. If I go up to 800, or 1,600, 3,200, or you might have even 128,000. The higher that number is, the better it can see in the dark, okay? But it's a camera, so it's gotta have some light. You can't take pictures without light. So there are some limitations um, in photography that have to do with, you know, light. So that's important to remember. I'm gonna put mine at 800 for now. I'm in a pretty dark room, maybe a 1,600. I'm in a dark room uh, in my office and I have the window open over to my left over here, but still, not a lot of light for a camera. If I tell you to change your f-stop and shutter speed, you're going to change these two numbers here. You can see this is the f number, f-stop number, and the larger number is a shutter speed, and I can also change them on the back here and here. You have to figure out which dial changes your f-stop and which dial changes your shutter speed. And I wanna show you some things in the menu. Now your menu is gonna look different than mine, but here's some good things to remember. The quality of your photographs should be on RAW. Now I'm gonna click this button here. It's gonna take me to some options in there. If I wanted to take JPEG photographs, I would put this on the line and then move this over to get one of these file types. Now they're JPEG and RAW. A JPEG is a small file size. Um, but here is the largest JPEG that my camera can take and then each one of these gets just relatively smaller and smaller and smaller and it tells you the uh, pixels per inch right up here. Okay, that's what mine does. So maybe yours does the same. Now we shoot on RAW. You could also do small RAW file or another small RAW file, but there's really no reason for that. Just keep it on your largest RAW file. You could also do RAW plus JPEG, but this makes a copy of every single image that you take. There might be a reason for it though. Look, your computer has to be able to read these files. So that's why you're required to get Adobe Photoshop onto your laptop or computer desktop for this class because raw files can generally be seen on any brand new Macintosh computer as well as a Microsoft computer, a Dell or a, any PC, but the editing is important. If you have an older laptop, you might not be able to view the raw files at all. So that's the only reason why you would do raw plus JPEG is in case you're like, I don't always have access to the computer that has Photoshop on it, so I'm gonna shoot raw plus JPEG. So if I have to get an assignment done, I can at least use my JPEGs if my brother has the other laptop or something. I don't know, life is crazy, right? So there, there are some reasons why that's useful. But for the most part, I'm only interested in your raw files and you can view those in the Adobe products that you're gonna use for this class. So, and then there's some other options. You got beep. Uh, I don't like a beep. 
uh, shoot without card, that's off because if my card isn't in there and I take pictures, I don't want to continue to take pictures thinking I'm taking pictures and saving them when there's no card, SD card or CF card here. So that's off. Read view time is hold, but you can change that to two seconds. So it only pops up for two seconds. So let's say I'm going to hit play to look at the photograph I took earlier. That's play. And if I want to delete it, I can delete it here with the trash can and hit erase and it'll erase it, right? There's another way that I can do that. Generally, I wouldn't erase any images off of your camera here by looking at this screen unless you for sure know it's out of focus or totally wrong, okay? Um, because sometimes we can't tell that it's good or not until we get it on a larger screen on a laptop or a desktop. White balance, you can change it here, but we already know how to change it up here with that button, right? Or you can change it here, uh, right there. So there are three different ways to change some, a lot of these features. One, two, and through the menu. Custom white balance is a little different. We'll cover that later. Um, color space, sRGB is good. Picture style, this is important. I pretty much just keep it on standard and then I hit info for the detail and I can change sharpness, contrast, saturation, and color tone. Sometimes I, I might ask you to use monochrome. So this is why I want to show this to you. It's under picture style and monochrome. This makes your picture black and white. So if I were to take a picture real quick, it's in black and white now. Now, you noticed I, I was clicking here trying to take an image and it didn't want to focus. If your lens doesn't want to focus, it will not take the picture. So that's good to know. Um, <clears throat> if it's missing focus, right, because I wasn't even looking through it, I was just randomly shooting, then it couldn't focus, so it didn't want to take that shot. So that's good, just good information to know. One of the other things we're going to do in here is know about the word format. This is the last thing I'm going to cover in here. What it does is it deletes all of the images off of your SD card, but it doesn't just delete them because otherwise we could um, put our SD card in our computer, select all those images and throw them in the trash or delete them that way, right? So what's the purpose of format? Well, when we delete the images off of our card using our computer, it leaves behind ghost data. It doesn't delete everything. And so what formatting does is absolutely deletes everything permanently. That's sort of the workflow that you need to learn is to take your images, save them onto your desktop, maybe back up your favorite ones to uh, the cloud. And then when you're ready to use that card again, pop it in here and format it. Then it's ready to use. But remember, formatting is permanent. I have this image up, I hit play, and this image came up. It does tell me some good information, the shutter speed, the f-stop, and the file number. And then if I hit info, it's gonna tell me 190 out of 194 images. If I tap that again, I know that I shot it on manual mode, it's a raw file, how big the file is, and some pretty good information. And right here, I have a number 141. That tells me how many pictures I have left on this card. And I also get that number down here. Okay, I hope that was a good overview. And you can always watch it over again, align it up to your camera and to the manual that your camera came with in order to try to process what we have gone over.